The first problem is from gate 2019. A delta connected 3.7 kilowatt, 400 volt, three phase, four pole, 50 hertz squirrel cage induction motor has the following equivalent circuit parameters per phase. Refer to the stator. So we are given the equivalent circuit parameters of induction machine per phase, which is referred to stator R1, R2, X1, X2. So you notice that shunt parameters are not given. Anyway, it is mentioned that neglect the shunt branch in the equivalent circuit. So we draw the approximate equivalent circuit where we have the stator resistance, stator reactance, rotor resistance and rotor reactants. So this is R1. This is R2 dash by S. This is X1 and this is X2 dash. So the values of R1, R2 dash, X1 and X2 are given. This is the applied voltage and this is the current. So we are asked to find the starting line current in amperes round off to two decimal places when it is connected to 100 volt. One minute. So we are asked to find the starting line current when it is connected to a 100 volt line. So it is a 100 volt line. It is to be noted that it is a delta connected induction machine. So line voltage and phase voltage are same. So this applied voltage is now 100 volt. 10 hertz three phase AC source. So here we are asked to find the starting current. That means slip is given by NS minus N by NS where at starting the speed is zero. So starting slip is one. And the starting current we have to find at a frequency of 10 hertz. So we are aware that when frequency is changed, the reactance value will vary. Reactance is directly proportional to frequency. So we are given X1 and X2 as 8.22 ohms for 50 hertz. Now for 10 hertz, the value of X1 and X2 will be 8.22 by 50 into 10, which is just 8.22 by 5, which will come out to be 1.644 ohms. So we have it simply reduced to an RL circuit where we are applying a 100 volt across a resistance given as 5.39, 5.72 by S. S is already 1. Now we have this is 1.644. This is also 1.644 J because reactance. So starting current, this value, this IST is given as magnitude will be 100 divided by root over 5.39 plus 5.72 square plus 1.644 two times square. So this will come out to be 8.63 amps. So it is given that we have to find what starting line current. So since this is a delta connected system, the starting line current will be root three times the starting current, phase current. So it will be root three times 8.63, which will come out to be 14.95 amps. So the catch of this question is frequency change. So you have to be aware of the frequency relation with reactants. Is this clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now let's move on to the next question. This question is asked in gate 2020 for two marks. Windings A, B and C have 20 turns each and are wound on the same iron core as shown along with winding X, which has two turns. The figure shows the sense clockwise or anti-clockwise of each of the windings only and does not reflect the exact number of turns. If windings A, B and C are supplied with balanced three phase voltages at 50 Hertz and there is no core saturation, the no load RMS voltage in volt rounded off to two decimal places across winding X is. So we have an iron core in which four windings are wound, A, B, C and X. A, B and C are excited from a three phase source where X is not connected to anything. There is no current flowing through X. So the core, the flux in the core will be established by the currents through A, B and C. Now let us find out what is the direction of this flux. I'm assuming that the direction of flux is this way. Let this be phi net. 
So this phi net has an effect of A, B and C. Now let us find out what is the direction of fluxes contributed by three windings. Now winding A is connected across to 30 angle 0 and neutral. So positive polarity is given here. So let us assume that current is flowing this way. So here current will come out like this. Now we have to use right hand thumb rule. When you, that means you cross your fingers of your right hand in the direction of the current and whichever direction your thumb points will be the direction of flux. So in the case of A, what, what is the direction of flux, upward or downward? Can someone tell me? Upward, ma'am. Are you sure? Like you cross your fingers of right hand across the winding. Then your thumb will point no, toward the direction. Okay. So your flux contributed by A will be downward. Similarly, the positive polarity current will flow. Current will flow in this direction. So here, the flux contributed by B will be in this direction. Upward no, or downward? Upward. Yes. So 5B will be upward. And the current through C will be in this direction. So when you apply right hand thumb rule, you get that flux 5C is in the same direction as 5B. So the net flux is in this direction. So it is same as direction of 5B and 5C. So the net flux is 5B plus 5C minus 5A. So now what we will do with this flux information? We are asked to find the no load RMS voltage across winding X. So we know that the voltage induced in a winding is rate of change of flux linkage. So flux linkage means number of turns into flux. So this will be N d phi by dt. So if you are concerned about a single winding, there is a single winding and there is a flux passing through the winding. And that flux, if it is varying as a sinusoidal function, then this will be in d by dt of phi m sin omega t, where phi m is the peak value of flux. So when you solve this, you will get n phi m omega sin omega t derivative is cos omega t. So this is the instantaneous value of voltage induced. Now what is the RMS value? We know this is the peak value. So RMS value is peak value divided by root 2. But your omega is what? This is electrical frequency in radian per second. So it is actually 2 pi times supply frequency by root 2. So this will come out to be 4.44 F pi m into n. n is the number of turns. I hope you are familiar with the transformer RMS voltage equation which is 4.44 supply frequency flux times number of turns. So from this equation, if you relate to the question, we see that the flux passing through all the coils, the net flux passing through all the coils are same because they are connected to the same core. Now, the frequency is also fixed. So we see that the RMS voltage by number of turns is proportional to frequency and flux. So since frequency and flux are constant, V by N remains constant. That is induced voltage or voltage induced per turns. Voltage per turn remains constant. Till this point is a question, uh, explanation clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So V by N is proportional to frequency as well as flux. So my net V by N is proportional to net flux. So I'm giving a proportionality constant, say so the net V by N is proportional to phi net. Similarly, when you consider winding A, what is voltage A by N? It will be Na. It will be proportional to phi A. Right? 
Similarly, winding B, volt, uh, RMS voltage across winding B divided by number of turns of winding B will be proportional to flux of winding B. Similarly, in the case of C also, this will be proportional to phi C. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now you have the relation phi net is phi B plus phi C minus phi A. So when you substitute all this, even if you take a constant of proportionality, it will come in both sides and it will cancel off. So we can directly write V by N net is given by VB by NB plus VC by NC minus VA by NA. This is a catch of this question. If you get this, then rest is easy. So we are we first derived the RMS voltage equation from this. We get, got that voltage per turns is constant. Now we are solving for voltage per turns in terms of net flux. So here VB is already given. VB is given as what? This is VA, this is VB, this is VC. So VB is 230 angle minus 120. A number of turns, NA, NB, NC are same. They all have 20 turns. So 230 by 20 angle minus 120. You should not forget to put the angle. These are all our vectors. So VC is 230 by 20 angle plus 120. Oh, one minute. Now VA is 230 by 20 angle 0. So let this be say B, this be C, this be A. So you have a three phase balance system. This is A. B is 120 degree displaced, lagging A. So this is B and this is C. All their magnitudes are same. Say X. X is their magnitude. So now this is B plus C, vector addition of B and C. We know that the angle between them is 120. And since their magnitudes are same, their sum will be passing through the middle. Middle is actually 60 degree, which is nothing but 120 plus 60, 180. So this is B plus C. And when you solve for its magnitude, you know that when two vectors are added, the pro sum will be the vector addition magnitude will be the magnitude of first vector square plus second vector square plus two times magnitudes of both vectors times cosine of angle between them. So here the angle between them is 120. So this will come out to be minus. So this will, sorry, this will, magnitude will come out to be x. So we have b plus c as minus x. Because it is lagging the reference vector by 180 degree. Or this is x angle 180. Where x is the magnitude of both b and c. So when two vectors are displaced by each other by 180 degree. And if their magnitudes are same. Then their resultant will be one of its magnitude. Angle, half of the angle between them. Here in this case it is 60. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So in this given problem, you got B plus C as minus X. But we are already, this is X. So the sum is V by N net is B plus C minus A. But B plus C is already minus X. And A is X angle 0. So this is minus 2X where x is 230 by 20. So this will come out to be minus 23. So we got our voltage per turn as voltage per turn net as minus 23. This voltage per turn is constant. This voltage per turn is constant. So now we go to the winding in the question x. So we already obtained RMS voltage by number of turns is 23. Magnitude you have to take 23. So Vx is 23 times number of turns of x. In the question it is already given number of turns of x is 2. So it is 23 into 2 which is 
46 volts. This is the RMS value of the voltage across X at no load. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So hope you all are familiar with the test series going on in NPTEL every Sunday. Uh, kindly attend the test series. So by this, uh, we wind up today's session. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.